Any of you have probably learned the basics about the Mayan Empire because of your high school history class. You most likely already know that they were an ancient civilization in southern Mexico, Guatemala, northern Belize and western Honduras. But few people know how truly strange the Mayan people were. Welcome. Nothing makes for a romantic night with your partner like a bottle of wine and a box of chocolate. But the Mayans took it to another level. They would ferment their cocoa beans, making for an inebriating chocolate beverage. However, instead of drinking it the normal way, it was administered through enemas, through the, back door. Exactly why did the Mayans choose to drink their chocolatey beer this way? One theory references a piece of Mayan art depicting a Mayan hanging over a vat of the stuff and receiving it in the rear while they vomit. Perhaps this was a way to speed up the process of intoxication when the stomach was not so inclined. It may have also been part of a ritual that involved hallucinogens. As horrifying as it may seem, human sacrifice was a source of security and hope for the Mayan people. They believed that it was nourishment for the gods. It was considered mandatory whenever a new ruler came to power, or a new building was completed. Sacrificial victims were usually gathered from prisoners of war. Most prisoners were used as slave labor with only a few sacrificed to the gods. The victim's skin was painted blue. They were given a headdress and held down on the altar by four attendants. The head attendant would cut out the victim's heart with a ceremonial knife. Their heart was then passed to the priest, who then smeared the blood onto an image of a god. The body was then thrown down the steps of the temple. Afterwards, the corpse was skinned by the priests and worn by dancers, to symbolize rebirth. In modern times, if we see someone cross-eyed, we try not to stare for too long. And many parents opt to give their child surgery to correct the issue. But the Mayan people actually thought that crossed eyes were a sign of nobility. They also believed that it made someone more physically attractive. So they would induce the condition by hanging a piece of thread in between their baby's eyes. They would attach a stone or ball of resin at the end of the string, and the baby would focus their eyes on it. Eventually, their eyes would rotate inwards, causing them to be slightly cross-eyed for the rest of their life. Believe it or not, this is something that modern Mayans still do today, because it's still considered attractive. Keeping track of all the Mayan gods can be a dizzying affair. This is partially due to the fact that the names of many of the gods often change by region, as well as particular details of the myths. However, the core identity of the gods and mythological ideas stay the same despite having different names. For example, whether it was 13 gods involved, or two, there seems to be an agreement that the gods created humanity from corn. And apparently it was not a straightforward process. Practically every aspect of Mayan life was covered by at least one deity. For some gods, no information about them can be discerned, and some are conflated either with each other or with later Christian ideas. We would have a better picture of the richness of Mayan theology today if the Europeans had not burned the Mayan books, but we will get to that part in a second. Along with chocolate and alcohol, tobacco use was one of the many vices enjoyed by the ancient Mayans. Mayan tobacco was much stronger stuff than the cancer packets you can buy off the shelf today. It made you feel dizzy, but also calm and focused. It was believed that the plant itself had a soul, and that you could feel the power of thunder and lighting up the nerves in your body. They also believed it had healing properties, and could ward off witches and demons. Mayan shamans took in the tobacco with enemas, and this provided them with powerful visions. Hundreds of Mayan snuff boxes have been found by archaeologists. These snuff boxes are clay pots that are about the size of modern cigarette boxes. They bear the images of gods who are depicted smoking tobacco. The snuff may have also been used for chewing and snorting. If you are enjoying my videos please consider to subscribe as it really helps this channel out. The Mayans had a taste of style that could have put David Bowie to shame. Men and women wore it long and fabulous. These hairstyles often were meant to mimic or depict their gods, or animalistic motifs. Feathers, jaguar skins, flowers, herbs, and jewels were all used. Something like a receding hairline was also considered attractive, at least for men. They would often burn away layers of hair to achieve that look. Mayans loved styling their hair so much, it was a severe and humiliating punishment to have your hair cut off. Hair was even integrated into the class structure itself. In particular, it was the nobility who wore their hair the longest and prettiest. Lower classes typically wore shorter and less ornate fashions. 
Being that fabulous would be an expensive and time-consuming affair. It's something only the nobles could probably afford. You might not think the Mayans, of all people, would have much to relate to with Midwestern farmers. But it turns out the Maya may have had an unhealthy fixation with corn. They believed that the gods had fashioned them from corn. So they effectively saw the long, slender nature of corn as the highest form of beauty. Ergo, they were very much enamored by long, slender faces. Hence the tendency for head binding and elongation of the skull. Examination of Mayan skulls showed that 90% of them were artificially elongated. Modern beauty standards seem to prefer smaller noses, but the Maya preferred large and prominent ones. So much so, that many even wore artificial nose bridges. You will find an example of the ideal Mayan man in depictions of their maize god, Yum Cox. Though they are no longer used often in modern dentistry, many of you may have relatives who have a gold crown or two. The Mayans were no stranger to the use of precious materials to repair teeth. In fact, what may seem at first to be an odd practice for ritual or beautification purposes, putting gems in teeth was actually part of Mayan cavity prevention. The materials used for adhering the gemstones were complex recipes that had many hygienic and even therapeutic properties including being antibacterial, antimicrobial, and antifungal. These cements were so durable, they've lasted till today and continue to hold these gemstones firmly in place. The recovered samples mostly come from persons of roughly middle class status, so it was not an exclusive luxury of the upper class. Gem materials included cinnabar, turquoise, quartz, hematite, serpentine, jadeite, and even iron pyrite. Modern drivers are no strangers to potholes and crumbling infrastructure. It may make you all at once amazed and disappointed to know that ancient Mayan roads still exist in the rainforest today. These were so simple dirt paths, as one might expect when one imagines an ancient civilization. The roads were massive. In fact, the term Mayan highway might be a more apt term. These roads were 130 feet wide. That's about the width of a modern 10-lane highway. They were also 15 feet high, about the height of a single-story house. About 110 miles of these elevated highways have been found so far. That's greater than the distance between New York City and Philadelphia. What is perhaps most impressive is the age of these structures. The roads and the other buildings and infrastructure they are related to date to about 1000 BC. Everything in Mayan culture was in some way connected to the gods, including their tattoos. Getting a tattoo is a painful process. Due to the lack of knowledge in germ theory, Mayan tattoos often resulted in infection and sickness. However, this was considered part of the process. A tattoo had sacred meaning. Getting one and enduring the pain and illness was part of the sacrifice to appease the gods, they were encouraged to not show pain during the process. This was to achieve admiration and higher status. The Mayan process would have been considerably more painful than the contemporary one. An image was painted on the individual, then cuts were made along the pattern. It scarred into a colorful tattoo. Men and women got tattoos, and they could be found anywhere on their chest, back, arms, legs, or faces. You'd think it would be hard to be a killjoy about something like Asana. But that didn't stop the Catholic Church in the 16th century. Perhaps be because of the nakedness, though the biggest hang-up may have been the extensive religious rituals used in Mayan saunas. They often offered incense to idols in these saunas called Zumpilche. The sauna was believed to have spiritual and healing power. It was used to heal all sorts of ailments. Saunas were also used very commonly by women who had recently given birth. Nothing like a trip to the sauna to treat postpartum symptoms. Zumpilche even translates to, a bath for women after childbirth and for sick persons used to cast out disease in their bodies. Eventually the Spanish themselves caught on to the fad, but not until they removed the old paganism out of the practice. Countless history nerds mourn the loss of the Library of Alexandria. However, the true history Chad will be shedding a tear over the burning of the Mayan codices. One could easily condemn Bishop Friar Diego de Landa, 1524-1579, as one of the most evil and ignorant men in history. His zealous persecution of the Mayan religion through torture and death by burning, in spite of the fact that the church actually forbade abuse of the natives, drove many Maya to commit suicide. He nonetheless was convinced he was saving lives, as the Maya were still practicing human sacrifice in their rituals. Delanda himself documented a time when he burned about a hundred Mayan texts he believed satanic in front of a local community. He remarked about how much sorrow and regret was expressed by the Maya, and how strange he thought it was. 
It remains a mystery to this day why the Maya civilization declined and died off. The collapse did not happen everywhere and all at once, however. Mayan civilization appears to have had many local ups and downs, but the common pattern was that cities were eventually abandoned and lost. Why this happened exactly is a mystery. Scientists have theorized all sorts of causes from warfare, famine, overpopulation, trade disputes, drought, and environmental degradation. Though as some cities fell, others rose to prominence. Most of the northern cities were populated when the Spanish came and eventually conquered the Maya. Many Maya cities would be lost and forgotten until their rediscovery in the 19th century. The fact that the Maya still exist as a people and carry on their traditions today despite all the disaster and tragedy is a testament to both the sophistication and spirit of their people. Now go check out how Egypt have two Nile re instead of one.